You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Dr. Schlich, and today we dive into the unexpected, exciting deep ocean of the creative mind together with Ed Harper. I'm sitting here in front of uh, Ed's goat farm, uh, we may be awaiting a shower, so hopefully uh, we are lucky and, and we can we can finish our talk today without getting really wet. Because um, uh, okay, so I will I will actually start with hello Ed. Hi. Hi to see you. Uh, nice to see you. It's great to to be here and uh, we um, finished the first part, the first talk. Um, with actually with with your message that that you're looking for 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 somebody for for volunteering here uh, on 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 your farm for long term volunteers um as well we 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 discussed in in the first part uh, uh, some some philosophical issues of, about about the fact uh, how it is if you are blind because at is blind and uh, he is almost uh, blind since his birth and if you interested how things happened you can go back into the first part uh he came a long time before over here to 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 this island to cape clear and uh I was wondering, yeah. So because mm. Ed was as well a, a teacher in London, was it? Ed was, was it? no, no, in, in Kidderminster, which is just southwest of Birmingham, All in right. the Midlands of England. So, 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 so he was teaching. But have you been teacher for blind people or teacher for for for? No, in a, in, a, in an ordinary college of further education, I was teaching. Um, essentially, the majority of people I taught were well. They were all post sixteen, and. The, the majority of them would have been either people who left school because they didn't like school or the school left them because they didn't like them um, or they wanted to do subjects they couldn't do at school so we had a, a college that um, did a whole huge range of subjects I mean it went from um, basic um, engineering courses and boat building courses and that kind of thing yeah. through to degree level carpet design and um, HND which is degree level technological uh, degree yeah. in, in carpet technology and we, we lived in a, a town that made carpets that's why the college and the, the colleges of further education basically uh, provide all the the ordinary what you might call academic subjects yeah. you know that you, you could do at school or, or whatever but they also respond to whatever the the industrial needs are in in the area they're in yeah. so intriguing intriguingly historically we had a boat building course and the reason <laughs> we had a boat building course though yeah. we were we were, i don't know must have been at least 100 miles from the sea um <laughs> was because the 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 um river seven was not very far away and the river seven was a navigable river and mm. then when the river seven ceased to be a navigable river because ships got bigger yeah um there was then a, a, the canal system was being built we're talking what um 18th century early 19th century and the canal went to the the town that was next to kidderminster which was a place called stourport mm. um, and that's where the canal joined the river and then eventually uh, the railways came in the in the 19th century yeah. mid 19th century yeah. Yeah. and kidderminster itself was on the railway so essentially the the boat building came really because of the canal and the river and it stayed <laughs> because it yeah. went from being building you know uh, commercial boats and repairing commercial boats well, yeah. to pleasure boats of one kind or another you know and and you know but you could learn boat building skills as i say more than 100 miles from the sea yeah. which was intriguing yeah <laughs> That's great. So Ed was eventually was eight years a teacher at at the school, 
and uh, and he decided then uh, well, I don't know what was you were 30 and 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 uh, but you've been here 73 the first time on on Cape Clear you you mentioned yes came on holiday yeah. in 1973 for the first time yeah. and um then essentially what happened was we uh, myself and my wife came here we we were on holiday along this coast and yeah. we just went we went into a and b in Skibbereen and they had leaflets advertising the ferry okay the ferry timetable which i think was the only time they did that for about the next 20 years yeah. but so we were very lucky and uh, yeah. we we actually <laughs> honestly we, yeah. yeah seriously yeah. we we asked the the woman of the house um you know what what's on cape clear then yeah. and she said nothing yeah but it's very beautiful and there's a ferry goes from there to skull so we thought okay yeah and we were camping along the coast so we thought we'll go into cape clear camp the night and then we'll go on to skull all right and carry on around the peninsula yeah. 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 and we we came into this island where there was nothing and discovered in actual fact there were three pubs two shops uh close on 150 people yeah and, uh, <laughs> But you'd be amazed because when you know very well the the the, you know, the listeners and the the viewers wouldn't. But I mean, like Skibbereen from here is about less than twenty miles away. Yeah. Ten, ten of those nine nine to ten of those are actually by sea. Yeah. But nevertheless, it's no no great distance. But you'd be amazed how many people in Skibbereen knew very very little about Cape Clear in those days. Uh, very I, I can't imagine that. I mean, even if uh, I used to live in Golin for five years, um, people don't 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 travel. I mean, they, they they stay where they are. You know. Yeah, I suppose that is true a lot, and especially the islands. Coming out to an island, I mean, what we find is on on a very windy day, yeah. people won't come to the island because yeah. they're afraid of the the sea might be rough. On a wet sure. day, they won't come to the island because they're afraid there's nothing to do and they'll get soaked. <laughs> so the only time we see people is when the weather's calm and sunny. Yeah. Um, so we, we, you know, we have a tourist trade and we have a, a rising tourist trade at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Um, but we are fortunate in the sense we don't have a tourist trade that becomes oppressive like it does on, on the Aran Islands, for instance. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, you, you're quite glad when the you know it's, it's the end of september beginning of october and the place calms down yeah. it's like living in two places like what you hear so far make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now this podcast is made possible by listeners like you thank you for your support nice now thing. back to the show absolutely i mean i mean if you see in shirkin as well shirkin in the summer it's 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 full it's it's really and Shirkin would have more pe people there, they I'd say, because no. they have more day trippers than we do, because they're only about ten minutes yeah. off the land. So we we're forty five. Well, yeah, the the official thing is forty five. It's actually by the time you you've got on the boat one end, got off the boat the other, you might as well say it's an hour. Yeah, so it makes a difference. So and 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 the ferries as well a little bit more expensive. Then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's now. I think it's eighteen euros, but that's return. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I paid, and I paid in, eighteen. Yeah, and in 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 terms of you know, it's actually quite cheap if you think about it in terms of the the. If you go for a whale watching trip, admittedly, yeah. you've got no guarantee of seeing whales here. But I mean, it would cost you fifty or more, yeah. and you you get you get the expertise of of the 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 people that run the whale watching and all that kind of thing. But here, you get to travel um, to the island and back again, and you also you very likely actually we well, wouldn't see them so much in the winter just because the sea's rough. Yeah. Um, but they're around. I mean, you would, you could very well see dolphins, sharks in the right time of year, basking sharks. I never ever whales. saw a shark over here, actually. Oh no, yeah, yeah. No, you no. Did, there's if you actually if you look on YouTube, yeah. there's um I couldn't tell you the the reference of where to find it, but the, there is a classic yeah. um thing which a friend of mine saw it and said, God, I, I thought I was looking at something in the tropics. Yeah. It was Cape Clear South Harbour in the summer, yeah. with a basking shark All right. in the in the harbour and. In the background, there's there's actually the bracken growing, yeah. um, but at a quick look with, with this blue blue sea sunshine and the basking shark, yeah. he thought he was looking at jungle. <laughs> <Which>? <laughs> so what? So what, what? What was the shark singing actually? Mm? What was he basking? Oh, he he was. Oh no, no, no not a busking shark. No, no, no. We we try. We try. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's just a shower. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, we we try we try to teach the the the, the sharks uh, uh, Irish traditional I'm, I'm, music, I'm, I'm, but they're not very good. Do we have an umbrella? Actually, we do. Yeah, yeah. So we get an umbrella. So what I'm gonna do is I, I put I put the the laptop underneath here. Mm. Guys, it's all live. It uh it it proves this is Ireland. I mean, we this wouldn't be Ireland if we didn't have a shower or rain. 
so so it's still running uh my phone i don't i don't tell you from which company it is so this company should uh, come back to me <laughs> then, then i'll give them the name but it's waterproofed so so this is okay and it looks like we really have just a shower because i mean at least at least the forecast mentioned that that uh that it should be should be nice and cozy mm. and we uh, so ah, god eh, yeah yeah we see yeah Andy is getting an umbrella. Great. Do we have a second one as well? I see. Yeah. So, so, so. Um. There. No. I'm. Yeah. There might be, but I'm not sure where. I'm sure I've seen an umbrella somewhere. I, I, have a look under the stairs. So, Maybe under the stairs in that so, big cupboard under the stairs. So I or in the porch. So I take that just here over, over the equipment. So yes. Yeah. 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 One. yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, go on. So so so. This yeah, is... yeah. No, you do. It's a great. It's a great area. This the whole area is for. I mean, the, at one stage, um, you know, whales were thought to be you know rare visitors, but as as soon as people started going to look, <laughs> they discovered no, they're actually around here a lot of the year. And you also get unusual things as well. You get turtles, the big turtles, you know, loggerhead turtles, and, and honestly, else pass by. Yeah, wow. you need to be out south of cape probably to see those but i mean just just going on the trip from baltimore to here you would be fairly likely to see seal you'd, you could very well see dolphin you rarer you would see whale uh, yeah. and you would see shark sometimes and it's uh it's yeah it, it's a great place for it i mean occasionally you get these dolphin conferences I, I presume they're discussing the price of fish or something but they i mean there was one time we counted 150 dolphins in the bay just yeah. north of here just off the island yeah um that's unusual very unusual but well, but yeah it's um it's, it's a great place to live if you're if you're interested in wildlife and the island itself as long as I mean, it depends how you look at it, but it's you know from the point of view of of a lot of things, we we are very lucky because our land hasn't we, been we, ruined. We are, we are. No, I mean, and 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 Ireland is actually one of of the of the places with, without a nuclear power station, isn't it? Yes, and I mean that that took quite a lot of lobbying to stop it. And there's even people been trying to to again to bring them in. Um, there's this this mad environmentalist strain that says the only answer is nuclear power. Um, sorry, no, it isn't. Um, to to actually nuclear power, possibly if you're talking about fission, yeah. But that's not feasible at the moment in in a, a commercial basis. But nuclear fission using the the, the current methods is is positive madness. I mean, I remember in the 1960s, there were two things, well, three things that we were told. If you can, and, hang on, and it's just coming with, with a, you can give that to, 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 to Ed, or, I mean, it's, it stops actually already. Yeah, grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean the, the phone needs nothing. The phone is waterproof, so, so that's, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Go, go on what I was saying. In the yeah. 1960s, yeah. Um, we, we were told three things, right? One, yeah. nuclear power will make electricity so cheap, yeah. they won't bother billing people. The, the billing will cost more than the, than the power. Yeah. Right? We we're also told that the problem for people in the future will be what to do with their leisure, because with all this technology, working hours will get shorter, right? And the third one, we were told there's a problem developing um, because of the amount of fossil fuels we're using with carbon output and the climate is being changed by people. We didn't have the details that we have now, but we knew we knew in the 1960s that that was happening. Thank you very and, much, Andy. So it stopped raining. That, well, that's, that's the answer. You see, you can frighten away the rain by getting waterproofs. Yeah, 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 but the, the fact of the matter is all three of those relate to one very, very simple thing, which is, is the... the the fact that we have an economic system yeah. that values nothing other than profit. And so we've continued to use fossil fuels, despite the fact that in 50, 60 years ago, we knew we were changing the climate, right? We've got a lot more detail now. I know. But, I'm, but I mean... people, people sh you know, shock horror. I've heard people say, we only really discovered in the 1990s. No, we didn't. No, 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 we no, knew no, 30 no, no. years ago. It was in the 70s. 
Yeah. Or, or per, well, or, we, I mean, I tell, I'm telling you, I when I was a kid, well, I first got involved in politics when I was 16. And I, I joined the Labour Party Young Socialists. And the Labour Party in Britain was the government at the time. Yeah. And around that time, I started taking very serious interest in, in things, including things like climate issues and so yeah. on. And we knew damn well, and so did the government, yeah. that we were having an effect. The detail of it, we didn't know, but we knew that. The nuclear power thing, complete nonsense. The reason for the kind of nuclear power that people have, uh, have continued persistently yeah. to, to invest in yeah. is because of its military uses. And, you know, if you are the military, you don't care what you do with no. your waste. And they don't know what to do with the waste. The world is, you know, ultimately going to have to sort it out. But God knows when. And to push the idea of more nuclear power stations being the answer is positively mad and dangerously mad. And the, the other aspect of it, too, is that if you look at the third thing, where's all this leisure? You know, the, the leisure is in the hands of the unemployed. There are more and more people with no work and more and more people literally killing themselves with the length of hours and the levels of work they're having to do. And then there are the poor people in the middle who are on zero hour contracts who are being kept dangling on the string who don't know that from this week to next if they're working 60 hours or six. And again, why? This is not a sensible thing to do. This is not a, what any decent human being would do to another human being. Why would you do it? Answer, profit. Sure. And and the the reason, if you like, that that I mean, you wouldn't do it to me, and I wouldn't do it to you, and neither of us would do it to Andy. Okay. Yeah. But the point is, the people who have the power and the people who take the profit are a s s different social group. I mean, I know that you get people like poor old David Ike who believe that you know we we were ruled by lizards, and maybe I'm wrong about it, it's his fault. But you know, anyway, there are people around who believe we've been invaded I mean, by I've, aliens. But yeah. We we might as well have been invaded by aliens because mm. we live in a class society, and the ruling class yeah, yeah, ultimately yeah, yeah, don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately, uh, human space is working like uh, this copy and paste. I mean, they they. They they look up the bad habits, you know, so so they copy it and 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 treat other people as well. Like I mean, that's that's the reason why we have this elbow society, you know, and and I think that's the reason why we have to we have to stress things like this out again and again, you know, so that 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 like you mentioned already in the first part, happiness and 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 love as much as possible, empathy and all that is more, far more necessary than than having. A bucket full of money but yeah as we know that i mean people people they don't want to have a free will people people want to have just they want to have the free will to consume you know so. well, i no, i i think that's what people are pushed into and that's what people do do because it is the only way they can get their pleasure i think if you give people more freedom and more freedom of choice they they will after a period it's, it's the same as if you if you take a dog and you lock it in the cage yeah. And then you let it out. Yeah. It, it doesn't know what to do, right? Yeah. And it's a bit like that with people. If you put people in in a, an, an awful restricted situation where they have no power and they have no choice, yeah. then ultimately, you know, they won't be able to choose and they won't be able to. They they won't be happy doing it. But give people the freedom. I mean, the you only need to look at why have we been such a successful species? Why have we survived so far? And why are we now killing ourselves? And the answer is we survived. And whatever, because we were adaptable, because we were sociable creatures, because we worked together, mm. because we were cooperative, mm. not because we we dominated each other, not because we, you know, one section. I mean, that this whole basis of of creating surpluses for surpluses' sake, and then mm. one small group acquiring them and using them to dominate other people. I mean, is in in human history is a very very brief period of time. It's probably. Oh, I'm, I'm not a particularly good historian. It's a few thousand years, yeah. double figures at the most, probably less. Whereas, you know, our history is is triple figures and more hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands yeah. of years. And, you know, our, our success is, well, or part of our success, I suppose, is the ability to breed rapidly as yeah. well. But, you know, a bit like rabbits. But yeah. I mean, but then... Most of it, the reason we survive, we, we are useless. You know, if you compare us <laughs> to a lot of, you know, just, just a, a naked human being is a pretty useless class of creature. And, that's what I mean. And, unless you know, it cooperates. That's, that's what I mean. I mean <coughs> unfortunately, so, so our species lose, lose, lose all, all, all the instincts. Uh, I mean, we, we lose the identity of an animal, you know, eventually. So. Well, no, part of the problem is, is one of the, the biggest 
difficulties. And I was funny enough, I was talking to somebody yesterday about this mm. <clears throat> because she's she's doing a PhD in in a topic called anthrozoology. Yeah. Right. And that the, in that very word, you have the assumption that people are animals. Okay. And that, that yeah. therefore yeah. you look yeah. at them in a similar way. And that is a very, very sensible approach because ultimately yeah. we are. And the biggest mistake that I say we made, and mm. I, I take no responsibility for it, but it, it, it goes back to uh, effectively to the, the basis of the Abrahamic religions that, you know, we are so different. You know, it's not a matter of degree. We are so different because somewhere or another, you know, there's some class of a supreme being, call him what you like, depending on which religion of the Abrahamic yeah. religions you believe in, mm. um, came along <clears throat> and said, you're it, lads. You know, you have a right. And I mean, the, it's Christianity I was brought up in, so I know more about that. But if you take the Genesis story, okay, mm. you have a right to dominate the world. Mm. And, mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, um, yeah. what, and you, Eve gets all the blame for introducing knowledge into the world. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, for those who think about it carefully, it means that basically Adam was as thick as two short planks. <laughs> Eve had the wit to see that if God was saying, leave that tree alone, yeah. it has knowledge. Maybe we should go and see what you can learn by, you know, having to go at the fruit of that tree. Right. Oh. Um, and, you know, quite, quite wisely that, that she did. But the point about that is, unfortunately, what that led to yeah. and it was unfortunate in a way, but we can we can solve the problem. It's taken a few thousand years, but that led to farming. It, and that led to being kicked out of the Garden of Eden, having to work for a living instead of being hunter-gatherers. But at least it did mean you had some control over your environment. Now we're in the position, probably for the first time ever, because of communications, that we can talk to people all over the world. We can rationally plan. Yeah. We can't, the, our problem is we don't, you know, and that it's in the interests of those who, who exploit others that we shouldn't. But the fact, and, you know, but we can, yeah. and hopefully we will, because there there could be a great future for all of us and for all the other animals that we live alongside. All right. So I think this is a good last word for the second part already. So so, so it was great to have you here in this show, Ed. I think it was a, a very interesting part, uh, a little, 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 little part to explain your life and, and how it is to live here on this island. And we for sure will continue that in the third part. We might actually, because it stopped raining, uh, we're probably happy to, to get another mm. 20, 25 minutes for the third part. And maybe we're going to sing a song then at the end of the third part. So dear listeners, if you come joining us to the last part next time, it would be great. And you can find all the informations in my descriptions about Ed and you can contact him via via my via my, my uh, account and and, and and Ed thank you for having you here. That's a pleasure. Take care. Bye. This is a listener supported show. I feel honored if you subscribe this show. You can follow me non-financial with the following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link below. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in this Sunday for the third part of this Attitude Audio Triptych. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Attitude Podcast account. Eventually, I would like to thank through this medium all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world. Just to remember myself that without you, this year couldn't and wouldn't happen. You have listened to Artitude, West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. Artitude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.